In this video, I'm going to share a crucial step you need to take when you are pinning other people's content to Pinterest. Let's get started. Hey guys, Angie with AngieGunzo.com and I want to share with you a simple, crucial step that you need to take when you're pinning other people's content. Now in the previous Pinterest marketing tip, in the video right before this one, I mentioned that you do need to pin other people's content to your Pinterest business account. I recommended a 50-50 ratio. Well, when you are pinning other people's content, there is a really crucial step that you need to take before you add it, before you pin it. Okay, so what is that crucial step? Well, before I tell you, I want to share something with you really quickly. Can you see my shirt here? Let me get up. It says, hashtag love my job. I wanna give a shout out to MailerLite. MailerLite is my email service provider. I love them. I'm definitely gonna do a video about them later, so make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get notified when I publish that video. Talking you through MailerLite, it's a really affordable email service provider and they don't have this crazy, insane affiliate program. So I'm not making a whole boatload of money from referring them and recommending them. So they are like legit, just awesome. I think everyone should use them, but they're really great. They sent me this cool shirt and I love it. Hashtag love my job. So, okay, let's get into this crucial step that you need to take when you are pinning other people's content. It's really simple. All you need to do is make sure that it's high quality content. That's it. Because oftentimes people hear, okay, I need to pin other people's content. So they just go through and they just start pinning random stuff like crazy. Because as you probably know from a previous video that I published in this series, you should be pinning anywhere from 30 to 50 pins. Now it definitely depends on your niche, but the sweet spot is about 30 to 50 pins per day. And when you hear that, it's like, oh my gosh, I just need to start pinning. And so a lot of people just start pinning everything in sight. Anything that looks good might have a good headline. But the problem is sometimes it can lead to spam. Sometimes it leads to crap content. Sometimes it leads to a dead link. And what's gonna happen is people are going to start to realize that they can't trust the content that you're sharing. And maybe the Pinterest algorithm will also start to realize that you are not pinning quality content that is providing any kind of value to people, to the users of Pinterest. So you wanna make sure that you are providing and you are pinning high quality content. Now, this will be a little time consuming in the beginning, okay? So I want to just lay that out there, but it's worth it and it will help you out in the long run and it becomes easier. Let's head over to Pinterest so I can show you what I mean by this. So this is that group board that I mentioned and was showing you in the previous video. When you are coming in this group board to add to excuse me to share pins out because remember there's this ratio so you've added your own pins to the board well now you need to be a good contributor and add pins from outside that board now what you don't want to do is just come here and either hit save or hit your tailwind browser extension and add pins um, or hit this browser extension and just start adding pins when you're brand new that's not what you want to do you need to click through each one and you need to make sure that it's going to a decent page, read the content, and actually don't read the content, skim the content. Just skim through, make sure that it's an in-depth post, it's high quality, it's actually about what it says it's about. Oftentimes you will find a lot of misleading pins on Pinterest. So this one will say how to plan your website design about pages that convert. Well, maybe when you land on there, the link could be dead. It could be someone hijacked this person's pin. Maybe a, sp a spammer hijacked it and they're leading you to something else. Or maybe it's leading you to a landing page or a sales page and you don't necessarily want to be sending your followers and people to that type of a page. So you need to click through and just make sure that it's something that you feel comfortable and you feel good about sharing with your audience. Does it provide value to your audience? Now, what you'll find is as you do this, you're going to start to see uh, a trend with people's pins. So if you go to this loveinspired.com and you find, wow, this is killer, you'll start to know that everything from loveinspired.com is content that you can trust. 
And that's why it's also important as a content creator to have a consistent design with your pins because once people get to know you and they know they can trust that you have valuable, good content, they'll just pin your stuff without even going to it or they'll share it or they'll automatically click it because they know it's good quality stuff. So let me scroll down and show you what I mean by this. So I've been on Pinterest for two years. I know the content creators that I, that I like that provide good content. If I find someone new, I'll click through. Um, but I know, oh, here's mine. I know I can trust this, <laughs> but I'm trying to find other people's content. So I don't want to pin my own. Let me keep scrolling. And what I do is I look for designs. Now this is from Tailwind. I know that this is one of Tailwind's pins and they have high quality stuff. So I could pin that. Let me keep going. Let's see here. I also know, here we go, aspiring blogger. I know that Steven creates really good quality content and his pins, I know that his pin design, he gets good clicks and he gets good engagement. So I'm gonna pin his content as well. So that's what I mean by when you go through this, you in the beginning, you need to click through to make sure the content's quality. But once you've been on the platform for a while, once you've engaged in these group boards, you've clicked on these pins, you start to know who provides good content and who doesn't. And so then the process is super quick and easy. And you know, it took me, what, five seconds to scroll through here to find two pins that I knew, okay, these are leading to quality content, I can pin these. And now I don't have to click through anymore, read through it, you know, read through the post in detail, unless I want to, unless you want to consume that information. But remember, you need to make sure that you are pinning high quality content, not only to provide value to your followers, but to provide um, the Pinterest algorithm with value. You don't want the algorithm to see you pinning content that leads to um, a bad source or spam. Okay, so that's what I want you to do when you're pinning other people's content. Click through to make sure it's quality so that you are only providing quality out there on the platform. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you comment down below, like the video, let me know, and then subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I publish a new Pinterest marketing tip for you or any kind of social media and digital marketing tip to help you grow your business. And then don't forget to head over to my website at angiegenzer.com slash checklist, where you can download a free Pinterest marketing checklist with 37 brilliant tips you can use to grow your business. Well, that's all I have for you today. I'll see you in the next video.